Hello, Mioni here and welcome back to another video. Today I want to look at trusts again because honestly there are so many benefits to this new system but I think a lot of people might have simply not read about them or if they did they've straight up forgotten. Despite resetting to level 71 again after the completion of the main scenario storyline at level 80, the trusts do have quite a few perks up their sleeves to make use of. So what exactly can you do with them? Well, aside from the very obvious leveling for many of your ultimate jobs, of which admittedly is not the fastest or most efficient way to actually level them, there are quite a few things to keep in mind. Firstly, if you're leveling a tank, these dungeon runs actually count towards the progression of your tanking exclusive achievements for X amount of high level dungeons tanked, which ultimately rewards you with a mount. You will note then that this means that you can essentially get your tanking mounts without having to ever tank in a public run dungeon. This to some people might be a big deal if you think about it. Despite criticism of antisocial behavior that this is plagued with, I think this is actually a very nice perk to have on the top, almost like a cherry. Even if you don't want to use this as your primary method of obtaining said achievements, which again is a much slower option than actually, you know, tanking with groups, it's a nice bonus to have. So we have levels for alt jobs and now tanking achievements and mounts, what else can you get from these? Well, the gear inside is an endless supply of guaranteed loot, which can of course be exchanged by your grand company headquarters for grand company seals. People may then look down upon trust as they drop less gear than a normal player run of that dungeon. But since they drop one piece of gear per chest and it's guaranteed to be yours and you don't have to roll for it, and could easily be more than you would usually get from a run in rolls, depending on your RNG. These seals then are the lifeblood of my own gameplay, to be honest with you, and I usually exchange all of my seals from a run for either ventures, so I can send my retainers on quick venture missions for gill making and reap the rewards from those items, sometimes including rare paint colours and glamour pieces that sell extremely well on my server, or I will actually use the seals alternatively for cordials whilst I'm gathering so I have to stop less whilst collecting what I need from nodes with the highest yield options that I can put on. Okay, so we can farm those. What else? Well, the challenge log will also work, so if you're wanting to get the massive experience boost from the challenge log entry for doing five dungeons per week, this also works for that as well. You have to remember trusts have an instant queue timer for every role, including of course your DPS, so the runs, albeit 25 to 35 minutes in length between them is actually not that big of a deal if you would end up waiting even half that for a queue to actually pop, which sometimes as DPS, especially in late nights or early mornings if you play, is the case. Minions, Orchestrion rolls, housing items, all of these collectibles drop in trusts off of the last boss of each instance, much like the original dungeon it's based on. Not having to roll for them and getting them straight into your bag is incredibly worth it for a collector or if you're looking to make some gill. Some of these minions will actually go for 200 to 400,000 gill apiece and much higher in some cases, and you can do them in your own time. You can AFK on the pools and trash. You can do what you like when you like with absolutely no downtime unless you want it. And that can be an incredibly useful tool to have at your disposal. I know several single parents or stay-at-home parents who need to constantly go and look after their little one, so they try desperately not to queue for anything lengthy out of the fear of the group not being understanding. At least here, the only negative experience you will actually have is possibly timing out of the duty. It's not like the trust can vote kick you or spam obscenities in whispers after the run, so trusts are very nice to have then. The runs are longer, the DPS is terrible in comparison to players, that goes without saying. Saying, the trust sometimes mess up mechanics like players, like in uh, Don Meg, Orianje sometimes doesn't stand in a beam and we get too many stacks and any kills as later on. The experience per hour is lower, but they do offer a part of a game that didn't exist previously to this standard. I'm looking at you, adventurous squadrons, you buggy mess. This is what you could have been, and I honestly think that the point where they are right now is actually quite well balanced. It shouldn't take away too drastically from a normal player run dungeons because of its handicaps in time to clear, loot amount, experience gain, etc. And it feels like it's where it might need to stay. Any stronger than it would risk damaging the queue system a lot harder than it possibly does, but any less and people would just straight up not 
do them. Anyhow, I thought I'd share this as I've spent quite a bit of time messing around with Trust and talking with other players and fans on what benefits they found from their own Trust run dungeons and what they disliked. And obviously I'd also like to hear your own opinions below in the comment section. Are you personally happy with where they are or do you think they need some changes to make them more or less viable in your opinion? And of course I might do another video on Trust as I get them all to 80. Either way, thank you kindly for watching, and I'll see you all next time.